Hi Ashish, welcome to Under the Bodhi Tree with Aryaman Hoda. I'm very proud to have a highly accomplished all-rounder on my show. So, Yashish, apart from being the founder of a $4 billion unicorn, Policy Bazaar, you are of the fifth fastest Ironman in India across all age groups. You are an international level swimmer representing India at the World Masters Swimming Championships. You qualified to study at the prestigious IIT Delhi as well. And then you went on to IIT Ahmedabad and INSEAD France. You received the Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 2019 as well, Yashish, by the Ernest and Young. Ashish, you have achieved 100th percentile in all aspects of your life. What is the secret to being Yashish Daya? So, Aryaman, there is, uh, first of all, thank you very much. You make me feel uh, very good. <laughs> but uh, uh, honestly, there is no secret per se. I was just speaking to my son uh, some time ago. And uh, I was explaining to him that, uh, you know, I was uh, not so good in academics when I was a child. Oh. Uh, but then I found uh, that I was good in long distance running. And uh, as a child, that gave you some recognition that you are good at something. Till then, everybody was telling you you're bad at everything because I was not good in uh, many team sports. I was not good in studies. So everybody was just telling me you are bad, you are bad, you are bad. But then there was one thing because of it, somebody said, no, you're good. And uh, I think that gave me a huge amount of uh, confidence. And then I started doing better at other things also. And so I have realized uh, in uh, life that, you know, uh, once we do well at one thing, uh, it makes us uh, suddenly do better at uh, other things. The second thing uh, that I realized, Aryaman, was... Um, you know, being consistent over a very long period of time play, pays very big dividends. So you don't really need to be the smartest or the fittest to start with. But uh, uh, when you stick to things for a very long period, eventually you manage to achieve great results. Uh, that's uh, really what I think is... Uh, because I'm, I'm one of those people who actually had no talent whatsoever. Uh, but uh, just being consistent uh, helps a lot. Wow, Yashish, that was extremely inspirational and very insightful. And speaking of inspirational, at one point, Yashish, you spoke about the risks of plunging into entrepreneurship. And I quote you, the biggest risk is not being part of the future. Yashish, this has stuck with me ever since I read it. So if you have top three advice, what will they be for young students like me aspiring to be future entrepreneurs? Yeah, I think uh, one should not become an entrepreneur for some uh, uh, romantic objective or romantic goal. Uh, I can just say for myself, uh, there was a time when I started feeling that I knew there was something to be done which was more meaningful than the job I was doing. And uh, when that time arose, for me, the risk became much higher that I do not do that thing. Because what is risk? Risk is basically, uh, you know, your probability of a bad outcome. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think the probability of a bad outcome was higher uh, for me not doing what I was doing and the probability of a good outcome was much higher for me doing, uh, let's say, Policy Bazaar. Right. So at that time, the decision became obvious. And yes, somebody asked me once, I said, I'm one of the most risk averse people in the world because risk is not a good thing. We don't have to take risk, but we have to understand what risk is. Uh, risk is there in, in life every day and not taking the right step creates the biggest risk because it creates lethargy, it creates uh, incompetence and eventually it creates failure. It is just, it may not be instant. So sometimes what we mistake for lack of risk 
is sometimes we confuse risk with instant gratification. Right. What did I get today? And uh, sometimes taking the right steps uh, are actually risk reducing, not risk enhancing. So uh, I think, uh, I don't know if I'm making sense on that. What I'm trying to say is many a times an entrepreneurship route is not a risky route. It could actually be a lower risk route because you may be so sure of what the future holds that not being part of that is a bigger risk. Today, when I look back at the last 15 years, not having done Policy Bazaar would have been a very, very bad decision. Yeah, absolutely. Right. That's that's uh, very, you know, I'm in awe right now, Yashish, you know, listening to your story and how, you know, this is what I actually perceived of a leader, a person who takes risks, but you just taught me something which I haven't learned till now about the difference between risk and calculated risk or the... Let me explain, let me explain what I mean. Suppose there is a you know, bunch of uh, bees, what would taking risk be? You go take a stick and you break the beehive. Mm. That is called taking risk because the outcome has a very high likelihood of being yeah. bad. Yeah. And it is bravado. If you believe you will be able to outrun all the bees. Yeah. So I think bravado and risk can go together. Yeah. Now, what is lack of risk? The same person is sitting there and is about to die of hunger. Yeah. And in that situation, he says, I am going to die. Now, if I am able to break this beehive, yeah. maybe there's a possibility that the 2% chance I might get some honey. Yes, bees will bite me and that will sting. Yes. But it is a better outcome than dying for sure. Suddenly breaking that beehive is not a risk. Right. You see what I'm saying? I understand. That basically, and I don't think risk needs to be glamorized. Because risk is per se a bad thing. Risk is not a good thing. Yeah. So when people say, you know, uh, he can take a lot of risk. I think that's a, that's a bad thing. Because why would you want to take risk? Somebody has to be stupid to take risk. Unless your return is so much higher or unless the chance the, or the situation, if you did not take that call, was going to be so much worse. That is the right decision to make. Right? So, so uh, cost you I think uh, that understanding and that maturity uh, is very important for uh, people, specifically those who want to become entrepreneurs. See, because if you want to become an entrepreneur, one of the biggest skills in entrepreneurship is self-awareness. Yeah. Being aware of your own strengths, your own weaknesses, your own situation is very critical to success as an entrepreneur. Uh, and yes, one has to basically find the, the least risky way of success. There is no doubt about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh... Uh, Yashish, I completely agree with you. So Yashish, now coming more towards the policy bazaar side, uh, policy bazaar addresses two big problems in brokers-led Indian insurance. One is mis-selling and the other one is low penetration of pure life and health insurance uh, uh, products. So your first campaign, Ullu Mat Banao, which literally translates as don't make me a fool, uh, to spread awareness against the misspelling of uh, insurance products. Uh, so which policy bazaar in, uh, induced changes in Indian insurance you are most proud of? I think the most important part that we did was we have spoken about term insurance or rather protection against death, disease and disability. These are very serious issues. And the middle class needed that protection. So, uh, see, a middle class person is somebody earning 5 lakh rupees to 10 lakh rupees as a family. If the earning member dies, who is going to pay for the school fees? And uh, who's going to pay for the house rent? I think uh, 
that is something that we spent a lot of time educating the people about. We are very proud that today at least most people are aware that you have to protect against death, disease and disability. Life insurance is not investing in plans which will give you a return over 30 years. That is investment. Life insurance is when somebody dies, their family gets a lot of money so that they don't have financial difficulty. If somebody falls ill, uh, their hospital bills are settled. I think that being insurance is very important. I know it sounds very basic, but even that basic understanding did not exist 15 years ago. So, and I think I wanted to uh, point out, Ariman, there are two things that we wanted to do and which we think are necessary in selling life insurance. And they're both related to trust. See, insurance is a subject of over trust. What that means is the seller must explain every part of the policy in fine detail. Otherwise, it could be misunderstood. And the second is the customer must declare their situation fully and completely. Otherwise, there can be a misunderstanding of the risk. So if somebody has diabetes but says they don't have diabetes, if somebody has a cataract developing but says they don't have cataract, then it is a problem because the pricing for the two are very different. See, if you at a very broad level appreciate, about a third of people in India have some chronic disease or the other. And this one third will typically account for about 75 to 80% of healthcare costs in the country. Okay. So now if you do the math, let's say there are 100 people in the country. 70 people are costing you 20 rupees total yes. Yes. and 30 people are costing you 80 rupees. Yes. There's a very big difference. Now, if all you have is the people who have a chronic disease buying insurance, then your price will be very high. Yes. So it's very important to get the right declaration. Yes. And that is where Policy Bazaar played a big role in getting the right declarations from consumers. But at the same time, making sure consumers understood the product very well. So that, uh, you know, disappointment wasn't there either for the consumer or for the insurance company later on. Right. So uh, that's excellent, uh, Yashish. Now, um, moving on to India, uh, you yourself as a company has seen how India has emerged as the third largest e ecosystem for startups globally, with over 9,900 registered startups across 670 districts of the country. Uh, and it also has 108 unicorns, which are valued at $340 billion. So, Yashish, do you feel we are doing enough as a country or something can be improved so that we even so that we go beyond like the top two, which are US and China? I think it is high time. See, if we have to take a 20 year view, we as an economy will probably be 10 times the size of our current economy, maybe six times. Yeah. Now, what that means is there will be new players, new ways of doing business, uh, which will change and replicate the current ways of doing business. Right. Yeah. And what that implies is the current set of rules and regulations may need to be tweaked for that new set of organizations to emerge. I feel there should be a so-called ministry of startups because we are seeing it, right? Every time, uh, I'll give you a very simple example. We went public, yeah. but are we management or are we owners? We don't know because on the whole, uh, the founders have less than 10% of the company. Yeah. So are they managers or are they owners? And that has deep implications because the rules in the Indian system are built around them being like owners, right? 
So, uh, because historically what has happened is the public has, when companies have gone public, 80%, 70%, 60% was owned by a single person in those companies, right? These are very distributed uh, uh, organizations. So the conflict of interest becomes different. Now, what I'm trying to explain is, thus the rules that are required need to also change for this group of individuals. The disclosure levels need to change. A lot of things need to change. And uh, I think, for example, taxation, right? The moment we get ESOPs, those get taxed up front. Right. Before we have actually got any money, we have to pay tax. Right. Right? Now, these are not issues for somebody who is setting up their fourth company and owns 80% of the company. Yeah. But these are issues for a middle class person who's setting up a company for the first time. Absolutely. Right? So I think many of these similar issues need to be solved. And only when there is understanding will they get solved. So I think we need something which is like a ministry of startups. Right. But startups also needs to have a broader remit. It is not just companies that start. It is also then watching them grow and uh, supporting them for a 15, 20, 30 year period sometimes. Because these changes take time. You know, the societal changes, the technology changes, the data changes, they all take time. Yeah. And I think uh, uh, that's one of the biggest issues that many of the startups don't have uh, enough voice because, you know, we're not traditional business people. So we don't know how to uh, connect, communicate with government very well. So we usually get stuck on those points. And I'm, I'm talking not just for myself, I'm talking about the entire startup ecosystem. Right. Uh, wow, that's very uh, insightful, Jashish. Now, what is your vision for the online financial marketplace? See, uh, financial products are not physical. They are virtual by nature. Right. And thus, uh, they would largely be uh, very... Uh, conducive for online transactions. And uh, that is the reason I believe, uh, you know, uh, more and more of finance will happen digitally. Because I don't think the meetings add value. They in fact take away from the value. What the consumer wants is empowerment, not uh, not too much intermediation. And I think we have to build tools and technologies to empower the consumer and the consumers will be able to handle just like people handle their online banking now. Right. You know, uh, why do I need to visit a bank to manage my bank accounts? Earlier, if you remember, we used to, you may not remember, but we used to go to banks, fill up check check forms, uh, make, make demand drafts. I don't remember doing that now for a very long time. So it's becoming more convenient. Yeah. See, I don't know why a insurance policy needs to be physical. Right. When digital is the right way to store it and store it forever. Absolutely, Yashish. So Yashish, that was absolutely amazing from your end. And thank you so much for an insightful interview. Now we are at a this or that segment of our interview. Okay. So, Ashish, work for a startup or a corporation? I would prefer to work for a startup and I would also advise young people uh, like my own children who are now in college to uh, try and work for a startup as much as possible. They will learn much more. Uh, they will, yes, they may not have job security, but job security is overrated. Remember your job security is only as much as your notice period. Right. So, and sometimes not even that. So yeah. uh, I think job security is overrated. Uh, I would certainly say learn uh, because the country is changing, the world is changing and the dynamism of startups is much higher 
than what corporates can manage. So why do you want to carry the burden of the older generation? Absolutely. Uh, you know, you uh, because in a, in, a, in, a, in a corporate, you are carrying the burden of the older generation. Yeah. That's great, yeah. So tea, coffee or smoothie, Ashish? I am a, a coffee person, uh, but uh, I don't mind smoothies. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm not a tea person. Right. Walk to work or drive to work? Walk to work any day would be better. It's not possible all the time. I yeah. wish you had added cycle to work because I used yeah. to cycle to work very regularly. I mean, you're an Ironman, so 180 kilometers of cycling. So I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but... I, I, I like the independence of running or cycling uh, or walking. Right. So this is interesting, Ashish. Win an Olympic medal or a Nobel Prize? Olympic medal. One wish today or three in 10 years? <laughs> One today. And now, since you are wearing that Puma running jersey, I think this is a perfect question for you. Go for an early morning run with Usain Bolt or Kipchoge? Kipchoge. <laughs> Be able to fly or run on water? Ah, Be able to fly. <laughs> That's great, Ashish. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you very much, Aryaman. And uh, it was a pleasure speaking with you. I really like your positivity. Thank you. <laughs>